Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net and welcome back to another very exciting tutorial. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at creating some damage and decay effects inside of After Effects without any third-party plugins. So if you like procedural effects with tons of possibilities, you're in the right place. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we're gonna be creating. Alright, so lots of cool things happening here and what makes this effect so powerful is that it's entirely procedural. And what that means is that all of the effects like the moss and the grass and the cracks, they're all automatically created based on the input shape, in this case a logo. But what I could do is change it out to some text and now all of the effect updates. I can even type something new and now you have a whole new animation. And it's worth mentioning that even though the moss is growing out of the cracks, it's not growing out of all of the cracks. So there's a certain amount of randomness that we can add to the effect. And just like before, we can change the lighting. So we can go into the 3D lights and we can change the colors, move them around, and we get a whole new effect. And you can see that the moss and the cracks and the logo are all being affected by the lights. There's really a ton of possibilities you can even control the decay around the edges instead of just the cracks. In this example, you could see the grass is only growing around the edges. We could do kind of a chipped paint effect, which is a nice, more subtle effect. Some other possibilities like this, where you have some blood on the logo, maybe it's for a medieval TV show. Uh, you could switch out the logo with like a McDonald's logo or maybe an Arby's logo, and this could be barbecue sauce. I admit the possibilities are starting to narrow out a bit, but you get the idea. Another one of my favorite examples is this rust effect. This is a good example of the layering that we can do. You know, it's interesting when I play this backwards, it reminds me of this TV show I used to watch when I was a kid. Uh, it was called Billy Mays. It was about this guy that would go house to house fighting crime and fixing stuff with this magic potion called OxyClean. He was literally cleaning up the streets. Hi, Billy Mays here for OxyClean, the stain specialist. And we'll supersize your OxyClean to a whopping six pound bucket. So these are all the examples. Oh, wait, there's more. Here's another cool example with like a gold plating or a gold foil. Now, if you're looking for something a little more clean, like metal, shiny titles, check out the fantasy title effects tutorial. Lots of great tips there. All right, let's go ahead and get started. In this project, we're gonna set it to 16 bits per channel. So just alt click until we get to 16 bits per channel. Then let's create a new composition. Make this 1920 by 1080. This all looks good, 10 seconds, and we'll call this decay. And we'll hit okay. All right, so first thing we wanna do is create our source title. So we'll take the text tool, we'll come in here and we'll type in decay, and uh, we'll scale this up. And then we'll pre-compose this layer, pre-compose. We're gonna move all attributes. We're gonna call this Decay Alpha. Then we'll hit okay. Now, in order to get to all of the crazy fun effects, we need to set up our basic title. So to do that, we're gonna duplicate this alpha, edit, duplicate, and then we're gonna pre-compose it. So we'll choose layer, pre-compose. And we're gonna move all the attributes and we're gonna call this Decay Bevel. And hit okay. Then if we open this up, we can set up our bevel profile similar to how we did it in the last tutorial. So we'll choose layer, layer style, inner glow. We'll go down to the settings here. We'll set it to normal, set it to 100% opacity, set the color to black, hit okay. And we're gonna set the technique to precise. And then as we increase the size here, we can see that it creates this inner glow that's perfectly aligned to the edge. Now I'm gonna set the size to about 20. All right, so that looks good. The other thing we wanna do is get rid of the alpha channel. 
So we'll create an adjustment layer. We'll do an effect called Channel Solid Composite, and this just adds a color into the background. We'll do black, hit OK. Let me set this to full resolution. And just to avoid some aliasing, let's add a fast blur. We'll choose blur, fast box blur. We'll do like one pixel, one iteration, repeat edge pixels. So let's go back to the decay comp and we'll set up our title with the 3D lighting. So if we go over here to our project, we've got a couple of different things here. We've got this grunge pick and this rock texture. So let's take the rock grunge, drop it out here, and I want to pre-compose it. So I'll choose layer, pre-compose, and we'll move all the attributes and we'll just call this rock texture and hit OK. Now to create our 3D looking title, we're going to use an effect called CC Glass. So we'll go in here, stylize CC Glass. And what we're going to do is go into the surface settings and we're going to select our decay bevel as the bump. And now we can see that it's starting to displace. Now in this case, we're going to set the softness down to zero and we're going to set the displacement down to zero. So we just want to create some of the relighting. Now, in order to get rid of the background, we're going to use an effect called Channel Set Matte. And for this, we're going to select our Decay Alpha. Now, we're using that in order to create a perfect cutout. Now, I'll go and turn these two layers off at the bottom. Now, we'll turn off the transparent background, set this to full res, zoom out here. Now, if I select our rock texture, we can go to the lighting settings and change it from the built-in lights to the AE lights. And what this will allow us to do is create our own real 3D lights. So if we go up here, we could choose Layer New Light. We'll choose a parallel light and hit OK. And so you can see if we move this around, we're actually adjusting the lighting of this title. So already, this is a pretty cool technique for creating some nice looking three-dimensionalized text. But we're going to take it a little bit further. We'll move one of the lights over here to the side and maybe hit P and push it back a little bit and then we'll create a new ambient light maybe at 50% and maybe just one more point light that has just a little bit of an accent color maybe some blue we'll move that over to the side maybe push it into Z space a bit and that way we're just lighting up the edges now we'll take our parallel light, hit T, and let's turn up the intensity of the light, and P, and we'll push it back a bit. All right, so now we wanna create a more rocky edge. And what I wanna do is lock our comp, double click on the bevel, and then uh, just move this over to the side. Now we wanna add a little bit of texture to our bevel. So what we're gonna do is inside of the decay bevel comp, let's create a new solid and we'll call this uh, Rock Fractal and hit OK. Then we're going to add the Fractal Noise Effect. Now, one thing you might notice is this little command. It's called Effects Console. It's free. You could get it from videocopilot.net or you can go over here to Effects and Presets and just type it in. Fractal Noise, we'll drop that on our layer. Now, one problem is that the Fractal is taking over the entire title. But if we change the transfer mode to additive, then it'll only affect the ridge. But I think it's a little bit too noisy. So there's another option that looks pretty cool. It's called max. And one thing I like to do is just turn the invert on and it uh, creates more concave cutouts. Now we can play around with the brightness and contrast and this will affect the way that it cuts out the bevel. Could draw this down just a bit. And another thing I like to do is create a little bit of an indentation. Now, one way to think about this is that we're adding and subtracting lightness. So what I'll do is take the decay alpha, duplicate it, control D or edit duplicate. And I'm gonna put it on top. Then I'm gonna choose channel invert. And then I'm gonna add a fast box blur. And uh, we'll crank this up just a little bit and now you can see that the way it's affecting it, it's sort of changing it a little bit, but I'm going to turn the opacity down. So hit T and just lower this down. And so look at the ridge now. So if I turn it off, 
it's flat, and if I turn it on, this just creates a bit of an indentation. Now, even though we have a nice rock texture, I wanna add some real physical indentation. So we'll create a new solid, and we'll call this rock dense, and hit OK. Then we'll add the fractal noise effect. Now, for this one, we're gonna set it to multiply. Then we'll zoom in here, and we're gonna increase the brightness. And so now we leave these little small patches and that creates these nice rocky dents. So let's turn the contrast down just a bit and maybe turn up the brightness a bit. We could even do something like a sharpen unsharp mask and this will make it even sharper looking. So that nice bit of variation where we have texture, we have indentation, that really adds to the realism of the base texture. Then we could go over here and just hit T and lower the opacity to say 50%. And that way we're not doing too much indentation. So maybe 70%, that looks good. All right, so I'll go and close the bevel profile and now we can start having some fun. All right, let's set up a background. I have this rock grunge texture, drop it in there. We'll choose effect curves and uh, we're gonna darken it down and just make sure it's darker than the title. I think that looks pretty good. Now for this example, we're gonna create a long shadow. So to do that, I'm gonna actually take a copy of the alpha channel and choose edit, duplicate. We'll put it right underneath our rock texture and uh, we'll rename a few of these layers. So we'll call this title, take the one below it, we'll hit enter, we'll call this shadow. And we'll turn it on and we'll solo it. Now currently it's white, we'll go ahead and choose color correction, tint, and we'll make it black. Now to make this into a shadow, we're gonna choose effect, blur, CC, radial blur, and we'll change the type to fading zoom. And then we're gonna move the center up really high so we can just zoom out and we'll just put it way up here and then we'll increase the amount and if we turn that off solo mode we can start to see our shadow now we want to somewhat match the angle of our light and we could probably set up an expression but just for this I'm just gonna use what we call winging it now, one thing I do like to do is maybe do a duplicate copy of the shadow, control D, and then set the range to maybe like one. And this just creates two copies. So I could turn the bottom copy down, the opacity, and it just creates a little bit more dimension. Now, speaking of dimension, there's a couple of different tricks we could use to dimensionalize this in a 2D way. One thing we could do is duplicate the title, control D, move it below, and uh, we could do the radial blur effect. We could do CC radial blur, change it to fading zoom, and turn the amount to about negative eight. Then we could choose color correction curves, and then turn the alpha channel up. So if we look closely, it's a bit faded, but if we turn up the alpha channel, it'll make it more solid. So in this case, it does a pretty good job. I think if we just darken it down, I think that's uh, pretty good. Now, another thing to note is that the shadows are still coming out of the same place. So what we could do is take the two shadow layers, hit S, and just scale them down until this dark edge lines up with that new bevel profile. So we're just gonna scale it down all right, so this is looking pretty good. Now, speaking of look, one thing we could do is go to our main title, and maybe we'll just change the color to red so it stands out a little bit. And uh, we'll go in here to the shading. I don't know. Maybe we'll just do a color correction. Let's add a curves adjustment and put it to the top. And basically, I just want to darken the text down a bit so that it's more affected by the lighting than it is by the texture. Cool. Now on the CC glass effect, there's some options under shading, and this actually gives you control over the material. Now for a stone surface, we wanna turn the roughness up 
and then maybe the diffuse down. And maybe we'll take this other light here, hit T, and we'll turn it up a bit. And, you know, we could have a lot of fun with the relighting. Now, one quick optimization tip is on the layer where we created the extrusion, why don't we turn off the CC glass effect and uh, maybe just darken it down a bit. All right, so now that we have the title set up, we can create whatever we want. We can add moss, we can add cracks, rust, blood, paint chips. This is where we start adding effects. So let's get started by creating this moss effect since it contains most of the techniques that we need to learn. And then we'll take a look at the paint peeling and corrosion effects at the end. All right, so let's add some moss to this title. So first thing we'll do is we'll take a copy of the Decay Alpha and we'll choose Edit, Duplicate, and uh, we'll turn it off and then we'll take the copy here and we'll choose layer precompose. We'll move all the attributes and we'll call this decay moss. And then we'll hit okay. Now we'll double click on the decay moss and let's move it over to the side here. And I actually just wanna turn the alpha channel off. We'll probably use it later on. Now inside of this comp, let's create a new solid. And we'll call this moss and hit okay. Now there's a really cool effect I like to use called cell pattern. And we'll drop this out here and you've probably seen it and you thought, what is this? What am I gonna do with this? Well, much like the fractal noise effect, this is a great building block effect. So what we could do is uh, play around with the size and just scale this down a lot. Then we can turn up the contrast just to create little small pieces, maybe a little less than that, there we go. And then on top of this, we could do something like a turbulent display. So turbulent displace. And we'll set the size of this really low. So this is just kind of like a distortion plugin. But we're going to set this really low. And what this will do is just create irregular shaped cells. So we'll set the complexity up to like three, I don't know, maybe two. And then speaking of fractal noise, let's add a fractal noise. And uh, we'll turn the contrast up and we'll set the blending mode to multiply. And what this will basically do is allow us to create some variation in the moss effect. So just bringing the brightness down will reduce the amount of moss. So we'll lock this layer. We'll jump back over here to our decay comp. Now if we hit backslash on the keyboard, it'll bring up the comp or I think this button does it. Now, if we select the title that has our CC glass effect on it, what we can do is duplicate that layer. So we'll choose Edit, Duplicate, and we'll rename this Moss Effects. Now, we could reuse a lot of the settings here, but just so that you can see the process happening, I'm going to just delete the effects. And what I'll do is I'll solo the layer, and now we just have a texture here. So we'll add a Curves Adjustment, which is just going to give us the ability to color correct it. I think that looks good. Then we're gonna add the CC glass effect again, CC glass. And under the surface bump map, we're gonna choose decay moss. And so now it's a little bumpy. We'll turn the softness down and the displacement down. We can start to see a little bit. Then we'll go to the light settings and change it to AE lights. So now we're starting to see a bit of the moss effect. Now to fix the alpha channel, we'll select it, we'll choose Effect, Channel, Set, Mat. Then we'll choose the original title alpha channel, the Decay Alpha Comp. And now we've created an alpha channel. But we actually wanna do something even more specific. We wanna create an alpha channel from this luminance. So we're actually gonna create two set mat effects. So we're gonna choose Effect, Channel, Set, Mat again. But this time, we're gonna choose the Decay Moss Comp. And that's this one over here with the bump map. So we'll choose that. Now, nothing happens because there's no alpha channel. There's only a luminance channel. But if we set the mat from alpha channel to luminance, now we've created some transparency. All right, so this is the secret. So now we have a very faded transparent edge. And we're gonna try to tighten that up a little bit with a curve adjustment. So add color correction curves. We'll jump over here to the alpha channel and we'll just crank it up. So we'll grab a point and just crank it up. So check this out, we're creating a layer 
with an alpha channel of just the little bits of moss. So now we could turn everything back on here and uh, it's perfect. Thanks for watching. Uh, or we could play around. So a couple things to note is that we don't have to crank it all the way up. Another thing we could do is if we don't like it being so close to the edge, we can use a matte choker. So check this out. We could do matte, uh, maybe a simple choker and just drop it between the two set matte effects. And if we turn this up a little bit, it'll just cut it down a little bit. Now, if we want to soften that edge, we could use a channel blur, uh, blur, channel blur. And this just blurs the alpha channel. So we could do the same thing, drag this up above in between the two matte effects. We could turn the alpha blurriness up a bit. And there you can see it just softens that. Let's just do a little bit of color correction on the moss. So we'll do another copy of the curves and uh, maybe we'll bring the red channel down a little bit, maybe the green channel up just a touch. And another thing, I think I might want to go to the CC glass effect and lower the height of the map. And also note that if we do a negative, we can create some indentation. So this is really the whole secret to this is we can create all of these effects from this single effect. So now we could play with the shading and turn up the ambient light. Now to give it a little bit more dimension, we're going to give it a drop shadow. So we'll go over here to the effects and presets. We'll type drop shadow perspective, drop shadow and drop it at the bottom here. Now this is not an effect I use very often, but we could turn the opacity up and you can see it creates like a little drop shadow and gives it a bit more dimension and rotate this so it aligns with the direction of the light. Now let me set the distance to say two. Now what makes this effect look good, I think is if you have a really tight alpha channel. So if this is the alpha and we crank this up so it's really sharp, then I think it looks a little bit nicer when you have like a soft drop shadow versus if it's too soft. But either way, it definitely adds more realism. All right, so now if we jump over here to the Moss Comp, hit backslash, it'll open up the timeline. One thing to point out is that if I play around with the settings here and let go, it updates in our final comp. And this can be a fun way to design once you have it set up. You can really play around with the different settings. So we could increase the contrast and this will create bigger gaps. We could lower the size and uh, just create a variation of, uh, of looks. There's also another mode called tubular and it just creates a slightly different looking moss and I think that could be kind of cool depending on what uh, you're after. Now if we turn up the complexity of the turbulent displaced to say four and increase the amount maybe the size to like three. We can really create some randomness. So let's jump back over here to this comp. And if we jump over here to the CC glass effect, one thing I want to do is turn the height up just a little bit. And then let's go down here to the shading and set the metal amount down to zero. And that way the specularity will be the color of the light. And then turn the roughness up. Maybe turn the diffuse down and the specular down and maybe the ambient up. And also let's make the shadow a little tighter. So go to the shadow, maybe set it to a two distance and maybe just add a little bit of red back. So if we jump back into the decay moss comp, one thing to point out is that if we grab the moss effect and lower the brightness of this fractal noise, the moss will begin to deplete. So in fact, this is not a bad way to animate the moss growing on. We could simply animate the brightness. Now the moss is looking good. Let's come back to this. I'm going to close the moss comp. And what I want to do is open up our decay bevel comp. And in fact, I'm going to turn the moss layer off. So I'll open up the decay bevel and let's slide that over to the side here. What we want to do is create our cracks in our bevel and that way it creates the indentation in our title. So what we'll do is create a new solid and we'll call this cracks, hit OK. We'll go over here to the effects. We're going to type in cell pattern again, drop that on here. 
and we're gonna change this to crystals high quality. And that creates these cool chip looking effects. And then I'm gonna turn up the amount really high, maybe to like 1500. So they're really thin. And then let's add a turbulent displace. So turbulent displace, you can search it right here. And uh, we'll scale this down a bit. Maybe complexity a three. And so now we're just getting a little bit more of the rigidness in our comp. And uh, I might even scale up the size of the pattern. So we'll just scale this up maybe to about 100. That looks pretty good. And to make it a little bit thinner, we'll set this to about 1800. Now I want to reuse this layer. So I'm going to pre-compose it. I'll choose layer, pre-compose, move, and we'll call this cracks. And hit OK. Now I'm going to set the transfer mode to multiply. And now we can see that we've created some cracks on our main comp. And maybe I'll turn the brightness down just a little bit. And uh, now we can close this comp. Now I want to put a little bit of shading into the cracks. So let's jump back to the project, grab the cracks comp, drop that over the title, set it to multiply. And to get rid of the alpha channel, we'll choose channel set matte and we'll choose that same DK alpha. All right, so now let's turn our moss effect back on and then we'll jump down to the moss decay, open that up, slide this over. So what we wanna do is make it so that the moss only grows around the areas with the cracks. So to do this, we'll jump back to the project, grab the cracks comp and drop it into the decay moss comp. Now, if we think about this in terms of lightness and darkness, what we need to do is invert this. So we'll choose Effect Channel Invert. So now we can see that the moss is growing around the crack, so we're halfway there. But we don't want it to be perfect. We want to create some randomness and some variation. So what we'll do is we'll set this to Multiply. And that'll make it so that the moss is actually part of the comp that we created. So now what we need to do is just make the cracks a little bit thicker. So we'll do a couple of things. We'll choose Effect Blur, Fast Box Blur, and we'll just blur it out a bit. And that'll make it thicker, but it's a bit faded. So let's boost it up with a Curves adjustment. And we'll take this and we'll brighten it up. All right, so now we're starting to get the idea. So if we lower the blur amount, then we can control where the moss grows out of. But even this is still a bit too perfect. So what we'll do is we'll add a turbulent displace. So we'll come over here, turbulent displace. Now we wanna be careful not to displace it too much so that it's no longer aligning. So we'll bring the size down and maybe turn the amount up. Maybe the complexity up just to give it a little bit more detail but I think that's a good start for what we need. Now, just to point this out, we can open up the cracks comp and we could change the size of the crack. So we could turn up the size and now the cracks update, the moss updates. This is that sweet, sweet procedural. Now we have our moss effects right here and I wanna grow some grass out of the moss effects. So a good place to start would be to duplicate that. So we'll choose edit, duplicate, and we'll call this grass effects. And we'll take this layer and we're gonna add an effect called CC hair. So we'll take this effect, drop it onto the grass, right on top. And right away, if you look closely, you can see little bits of hair. So let me see if we can get rid of some of these effects. I don't think we need a drop shadow for this. And uh, we'll jump into the CC hair effect. Here are the different options. We have things like hair length, we have things like weight, we have the density. And the cool thing about this effect is it's coming out of the moss. So if we jump down here to the color, we could change the color to sort of a greenish color. Maybe turn up the thickness. And it's cool because as you turn up the thickness, the weight gets heavier. Genius. Now there's some other options in the map settings. We could add a little bit of noise, just a little randomness. 
Maybe turn the density down a bit. Now the hairs are very straight, so just to add a little randomness, we'll add a turbulent displace. So turbulent displace, turn the size down really low, like three. We might also turn the opacity up on this. And maybe darken down the hair color a bit. Now notice that the inheritance actually grabs the color from the moss, which is kind of interesting. Um, so depending on what the color is, you can simplify your workflow even more. But uh, yeah, so we'll bring the thickness down a bit. Now you can see there's a little bit of lighting on this. If we go to the shading, maybe we turn the specular down a bit. Now there is a way to add a little bit of wind blowing, like in the original example. And the way to do that is to create a new solid. And we'll call this uh, wind map. Hit OK. We'll take a fractal noise. And uh, we don't really have to change the settings, just animate the evolution. Maybe turn the complexity down to like two. And then pre-compose it. So layer, pre-compose, move all attributes, wind, map, and hit OK. So then we'll turn that off, grab the grass effect, and for the map layer, let's choose the wind map. And so now if we just take a look at this, sort of just kind of blows in the wind here. I'll play this back real quick. So now we've got realistic plant physics inside of After Effects. All right, well maybe that's a little overstated, but uh, still pretty cool. So let's turn that off and uh, maybe bring the strength down a bit. And let's add a color correction to this. And this is the part where I think we just want to add some variation. So we could uh, take a copy of the grass now and hit Control D. And let's put one down below even further and scale it down a little bit. And then we could randomize some of the settings. So let's see, maybe, maybe take the link down just a bit and the weight up. And then these ones in the back here, so it's these guys right here, maybe we'll darken them down so it looks like they're a little bit in shadow. And the real trick to the grass and any kind of vegetation is just a lot of randomness and variation. So you could do things like duplicate the copy and maybe these ones are a little bit more random looking so we could add noise but just keep them really short so that they just create texture almost. So one thing we could do is take this light, hit AA, and let's change it to more of a warm colored light. And then uh, I'm gonna do a color correction adjustment layer. So new adjustment layer. And let's do a curves adjustment and maybe add a little bit of red. Bring the uh, blue down just a touch. We don't want it to look too orange. And then maybe a tint effect, just to desaturate it a bit. The material of the stone texture is a little bit shiny, so let's go down here to the title, I think this is it. And we'll go to the CC glass effect, and we'll turn up the ambient, which will brighten the letters a bit. And then we could turn the roughness up, and then turn the specular down. And then we could even tweak the color correction of the stone if there's just a touch more contrast there. And uh, now that looks a little bit more like the uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple on Nickelodeon, which is what we want, obviously. And now we could play around with the environment a bit. I have this uh, light spot. Uh, you could do optical flares. We could just scale this up maybe add a curves adjustment to it. We'll put it below the color correction and uh, just add a little bit of red and scale it up. And maybe drop the blue down just a touch. So that always looks nice. We could even move it over here to the side up here since I guess that's where the light source is coming from. Uh, that looks a little bit better with the shadow. 
back in the project, I have uh, some particle effects, a uh, free particle effects pack that you can download from the website, videocopilot.net. And uh, we'll take, I don't know, particle number eight, transform, fit to comp, we'll scale it up just a touch, add a curves adjustment, and we'll set this to screen, and then drop that below the color correction, and just slide it over. Now, once that's in the scene, I might go to the top and do a color correction on top, like a little contrast. All right, so this is looking pretty good. Now, I added some really simple light rays. I could just show you what I did. I just made a new solid with a fractal noise, and I did a mask around the top, and then I did a CC radial blur set to fading zoom. And then uh, just turn this up and then I move the center point way up here. Now it's getting cut off, so I like to do my solid composite trick and just place that before the radial blur and set it to black. Now it gets a little faded here, so I just scaled the whole layer up and set it to screen. And to create just a narrower scope, I could just bring it in here and then hit F and feather out that little selection. And then if we add more contrast to the fractal noise, you get a nice look like that. Maybe just lower the length of this. And if we wanted to, we could animate the evolution of the fractal noise. So we hit U, move forward here and just slowly animate it and that way you just get a little bit of movement in the light rays. So that's looking really good. And again, it's all procedural. So if we jump back into our decay alpha, where we have our title, we could drop that to the side here and we can type we could bring a logo out. Uh, just make sure that your logo is white. So we could add a tint effect. I'll just uh, mask out the emblem here, turn on the continuous rasterization. Now, depending on the size of this, we can even increase the bevel width. So now, how do we animate this over time? Now, one thing we could probably do is open up the cracks comp. And uh, we'll drag this over to the side here. Because the moss and the cracks, everything is based on this comp. So if we animate this comp, we could probably control all of the other elements. So what I'll do is I'll take a copy of the alpha, drop it into the crack pre-comp. Now you can see it's covering over almost everything and we're only seeing little bits of it. So basically what we need to do is animate the logo on. Now we could do it a couple of different ways. We could do something like a transition linear wipe because what this would do is just linearly animate it on. And that might be pretty cool if you just had it set up the right way. Maybe you only want the growth to be at the bottom and therefore you could just rotate this and maybe now we just have some moss halfway on the logo. Now to get it to grow outward you might use the fast box blur with an alpha adjustment so a curves adjustment with the alpha channel and the way I would do that is just increase it let's see so if we animated the fast blur, hit U, move the keyframe over and just animate it until it's gone. So let's go and just take a look at that real quick. So that looks pretty good. Get the basic idea there. I think the other thing I did was I animated the color correction. So you could probably just do the tent here and just increase it so it feels a little bit withering. I was also able to animate the bevel size and the way I did that was inside of the DK bevel, open that up and I just animated the inner glow. So the size of the inner glow from 20 up to, you know, whatever. And that way it gets rid of that nice chiseled edge. You could even start it even tighter like that. All right, so we'll take a look here, and uh, it's looking pretty good. 
I think we could see all the different ways that we can customize this and uh, add more cracks, add more dents, add more grunge. Now, the key to this is experimenting, but I do wanna show you a little bit of how I did the rust effect. So I just reset this back to where we didn't have any moss and we just had a nice logo. And what I'm gonna do is take the alpha channel that we created and duplicate it and then pre-compose it. So I'll turn that back off and then pre-compose. And we'll call this decay rust and hit okay. And then we can just turn it off and we'll open it up, slide it over. And uh, we'll turn this off and we'll create a new solid. We'll call this uh, noise. Okay, and then we'll take the fractal noise, drop it on here, and uh, we just want to turn up the contrast. Now, I'll go ahead and lock this and jump back over here to our main comp. We'll grab the title, and we'll choose Edit, Duplicate, and uh, we'll hit Enter, and we'll call this Rust, and we'll solo this. Now, I'm going to get rid of all these effects and just show you from scratch. We'll add the CC glass effect, stylize CC glass. And for the bump map, we're going to choose the decay rust comp. Set the softness down to zero, displacement zero. And set the lights to AE lights. And we'll choose channel set matte. And we'll choose the decay alpha from our text. There we go, just like before. And then we'll do another channel set matte effect. And this time we'll choose the decay rust comp, this comp. And then again, we'll set it to luminance. And then we'll add a curves adjustment and we can tweak the alpha channel. If we solo this, you can kind of see what we're trying to do. And uh, we'll just we'll turn this down actually. I wanna try to make it a little bit more crisp. And uh, I'm actually going to set this to be inverted. So up here on the glass, instead of a positive value, I'm going to do a negative value. And then add a curves adjustment on top and darken it down. So this is the basic essence of this effect. Now there's two tricks to making it look right. The first is we want to have the edge kind of bend upward. Now to create the bent upward edge, we need to duplicate the rust. Control D. And we'll put this below our first rust copy. And for this one, we're going to set it to be a positive value, just like that. And then we'll go to the curves adjustment, and instead of a really crisp one, we're actually going to make it a little bit higher. We'll turn the whole effect on. We can see we're sort of overlapping the bevels. Now, on the top one, let's get rid of the color correction and maybe turn the height down just a bit. All right, so this is looking pretty good. One thing we're gonna add is a drop shadow. So perspective, drop shadow. And again, we'll match the angle of the light, bring the distance down really low. It's amazing what just that one pixel will do. And then we'll take the top copy. Now, there's not an inner shadow effect, but there is a layer style. So if we do layer style, inner shadow, we'll go down to the inner shadow settings, let me solo this, turn the opacity up, and then rotate the shadow away from the light. And then we'll shorten up the distance so it looks like a layer of paint. And then maybe if we go to the curves adjustment for the alpha and bring this down a bit, let's see. And we create a much sharper edge and then on the below copy, maybe turn up the height. So we're really trying to create this sort of chipped up effect. Now we could add a little bit of red to this top copy and that's the sort of rusted edge. Now a couple things, I don't like the rust being so close to the edge. So the solution is we take the alpha decay and uh, we're going to invert this. So we'll choose invert and we'll set this to invert the alpha and then we'll add a fast blur, fast box blur, and we'll do like a five pixels. And then we'll add a tint and make it black. 
and then we'll add a curves adjustment and go to the alpha channel and we'll just kind of crunch it down a bit. So that's how we get rid of it from touching the edge. Now the edge is pretty sharp so the way to blend it is maybe a turbulent displace and turn it down really low. Maybe a three complexity even that's already working pretty good. One last thing to give it the texture on the inside this is a cool trick. Let's do one more solid call this uh, bump, add a fractal noise, really, uh, really small on the scale, very noisy, and then hit F4, hit the transfer mode to darken, and then lower the opacity really low, just like five or something like that. And that way you create a little texture, but if we take the bottom copy and drop the brightness, in fact, if you want this to be shorter, just increase the contrast. And that way there's like a texture inside but not on the outside. Now we can turn the brightness of the fractal down and then set a keyframe and then just animate it on. Now let's take a look. All right, so this is uh, looking good. It could be an acid burn effect. It could be a whole bunch of different things. All right, now if we take a quick look at this example, it's the same principle. Now if I turn off these four top layers, you can see that we have a little bit of a lift with a positive height. Then we've got a cutout which has a little bit of a negative and a little bit of an inner shadow. And then on top of that, we've got some plaster, just a deeper hole. And then we have another negative value with an inner shadow so that it really cuts into the title. Now in this example, I did something even simpler. I just animated the mask and this sort of revealed the texture underneath it and that's what created this nice decay plaster effect. All right guys, well I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. As always, visit the website videocopilot.net. We've got the project files, the textures, the particle stock footage, all downloadable for free. Check it out, have fun, experiment always. Now if you do like what we do and you wanna help support us, check out some of our different plugins for After Effects. We've got Element 3D, really cool 3D particle plugin. We've got some great sound effects and motion pulse. And we've also got a great collection of action stock footage. So if you need any of that stuff, check out the website. Anyways, I'm Andrew Kramer. Thank you guys for watching and we will see you next time.